Hello everybody, my name is Tit Pleunik and my role in the first team is managing customer experience. My mission is to make the use and living with first boats as smooth and joyful as possible. My third video of the knowledge base is addressing the pre-season checkup for Beneteau First 27 and I hope it will help you in your preparations for the season. I'll lead you through the key checkpoints and provide some simple solutions which you'll be able to arrange by yourself. Advanced maintenance tips and support will address separately. Last but not least, all mentioned is as well valid for the Seascapes 27. At the end of the vlog you will find two documents. Beneteau First 27 list of standard ropes and a pre-season checkup list which is a summary of this video and you can print it and I hope it will help you when you will be checking your boat. On this point I would like to ask you for your feedback on this particular vlog as well as on the topics you would like me to address in the future. I am available on the email on the bottom of the screen. So let's go and check the first 27. We'll do the checkup of the first 27, which was for two full seasons heavily used in charter, sailing schools and racing. Let's start with the deck equipment. Heavily loaded hardware could get slightly loose and the screws could start leaking with the years. This is usually a checkpoint for boats which are older than two or three seasons. In the bow area, take special care about the four-stage chain plate, all four screws of the pulpit where two are hidden under the front bar and one under each leg in the back. They can all be accessible through the anchor locker and take special care about the mooring cleats as well. Around the cabin, the most tricky places which need regular check are the chain plates of the diagonal D1 and the side shrouds, as well as the folding pad eyes used for the lifting straps. On the stern, check the screws of the push pit, especially the corner one and the mooring cleats. The easiest way to notice if the screws are loose is from the inside. You are looking for the rusty nuts or washers or stains of rusty water under the screws. On this boat I found out that the diagonal one chain plate is not tight anymore as we can see some signs of rust underneath the plate. After you find the loose and leaking piece of deck equipment you have two options. First one is that you reseal just this particular screw which is leaking. This is an easy and quick fix which will not last too long. Second and proper solution is that you remove the piece of equipment, clean the old sealant and install it back with the fresh sealant. In both cases I suggest you using Sika 291. In any case it's very important to remember that you need to tighten the loose screws in any case even without the sealant. Loose screws with play will damage the laminate of the boat. No matter if you will tightening just one particular screw or reinstalling the whole piece of equipment, there is one simple trick to follow. You always need to turn the nut on the inside of the boat and hold the screw on place to remain old or the fresh sealant working. Turning the screw will damage it. There are a few other parts on the deck which we need to check. So let's start on the bow. A piece that will need replacement every few years is the Dyneema stay sail attachment. This one is two seasons old and it's still completely fine, but in a year or two we'll need to replace it. Stay sail attachment point is tied on the V-shirt folding pad eye inside the anchor locker. Both ends are fixed in the same way with a club hitch, which is then secured with the burnt overhand knot, which is preventing sliding of the Dyneema rope. For the replacement you will need a little bit less than 1 meter of 6 mm Dyneema rope and the hot knife. Very important point of yearly maintenance is servicing the winches. But this is something we'll address separately as we also have them on the other boats. You've probably noticed that since the delivery the spring lock clutches are much harder to open. There's an easy fix to do. First wash them with fresh water while closing and opening them a few times and then apply some silicone grease on the bearings on the inside of the clutch as well as on the stainless steel X on the outside. Check all the mass block shackle screws. 
They tend to get loose during the year and this is much easily done when the mast is not stepped yet. Check also the blocks on the mainsail traveler system which are close to the engine and tend to get loose due to vibrations. Back at the mast base there is another checkpoint. Mast cable through deck hole. Make sure it's firmly fixed and still completely sealed. You really don't want it to leak because it's leading directly to the electronic components. On the outside of the first 27 there is just one piece of tick on the entrance plexi. It's very likely you will need to sand it and protect it with the tick oil. If you sand it be careful you protect the plexi from the sandpaper which should be of granulation of around 120. Next are the lifelines. The key checkpoint here is that the turnbuckles are secured with the safety nuts from both sides. Keep in mind that you also have lower railing and don't forget on the stern shackles which are having one safety nut each. I also suggest that all the safety rings are on the outside and properly taped with electrical tape. Both together will save you Janneker, sailing jacket or lycra. A simple trick when taping the pin is that you don't tear the tape when you are doing the last turn but you nicely cut it with a knife. First 27 stanchions are fixed on the epoxy attachment points which are laminated on the hull. If the stanchion gets extremely loaded or heat it will delaminate the attachment point from the hull. From the inside you will notice cracks around the cover of the base attachment. Repair of the attachment point of the stanchion it's not an easy job and it involves gluing and lamination of the epoxy base but it's worth checking so you can put it on the list for the next winter service. Back to easier checkpoints. You have orbit blocks with ball bearings on the main sails sheet as well as on the janaker sheets. Wash them all with fresh water and leave them to dry. Lubricate the bearings with the Teflon lubricant. Well known product is one drop for Harken but follow what the name of the product is suggesting. One or two drops are enough. Keep in mind that you need to lubricate the bearings on both sides because they are separated and don't forget on the triple block of the mainsail sheet. It's recommended to repeat it a few times during the season. One of the last checkpoints on the deck is the ceiling of the stern storage locker. Check that the gasket is still completely glued. On this boat the gasket is glued on the edge of the storage locker on the deck but I definitely recommend to glue it on the hatch. If you need to replace it, exact dimensions are written on the bottom of the screen. Be careful how you will do the corners. Don't cut the gasket completely, but stick it continuously and just cut the inner edge. Also be careful you don't stretch it when you are gluing it, because the gasket needs to be installed without any tension. Check also that the little dynema, which is stopping the hatch, didn't stretch too much and is not touching the rudder crossbar. This one should be shortened for a little bit. You can replace it completely or you simply do another knot on the inside. Especially on the hatches close to the engine it could happen that the safety nuts of the locking pins could ease. I will check to Hatsu 9.8 horsepower engine installation which is most common on the first 27. Of course the engine needs yearly service at the professional service point as any other engine but there are a few other points to check. Since the delivery the throttle hand position might not be aligned with the gear of the engine anymore. With other words when the handle of the remote control throttle is in vertical neutral position the gear and the throttle of the engine itself needs to be in neutral position as well. When you're moving the throttle you can see that the first step is changing the gear of the engine and then you're increasing the RPMs of the engine. Especially if you're removing the engine out of the shaft for the service and disconnecting the electric cables, it's really recommended to spray them with the contact spray before you assemble them back. The Hatsu 9.8 of the first 27 is having a special locking mechanism which keeps it, keeps it in the center. Make sure that the safety nut which is securing the locking cube on place is tight. Check as well the rope which is helping you to pull the pin down. I suggest regular replacement at least every one or two seasons. With years it could happen that the central X nuts will loose 
and this will give extra play to the whole engine bracket. Check that the nuts on both sides of the engine bracket X are firmly fixed. Check as well that the screws which are fixing the engine on the engine bracket plate are firmly tight. They are exposed to a lot of vibrations and a lot of loads, so it could be that they will get loose during the season. Check that the elastic cord is still in good shape and automatically lift up the bottom hatch of the engine shaft. In, on the engine shaft hinges there are two zinc anodes which are very important for the rust protection of the whole engine system. They need regular replacements. Original ones are from the Techno Seal, exact type is written on the bottom of the screen. We recommend replacement at least every two seasons. Force 27 hydraulic kill system doesn't require a lot of maintenance. The easy seasonal checkpoint is the level of the oil in the hydraulic tank. For checking the level of the oil you need to have the kill in completely lowered sailing position, so you will probably do that after you launch the boat. Check that the oil level is within the inspection glass window. If it's lower, refill it to the middle of the glass inspection. Use standard hydraulic oil with viscosity of 46. The opening is in the back of the hydraulic tank. If you'll be refilling the hydraulic tank, make sure you don't get any dust or small particles into the hydraulic tank. This can cause that the valves will not be tightened anymore and that also means that the kill will not be fixed. It could happen that the hydraulic system will start to leak somewhere. To define the place of the leakage, first clean all oil in the compartment and also on the hydraulic pump itself. Help yourself with a paper towel to identify the place of the leakage. In almost all of the cases so far, it was at the hand pump. It's leaking only when you are pumping. In case that the hydraulic pump is actually leaking on the mentioned place, you will need to replace O-rings on the manual pump piston. This is a job for a hydraulic expert. Moving under the boat, there are two points to check. First is the zinc protector. Check that it is still in good shape. This one is two seasons old and would need replacement soon. Original zinc protector is supplied by Technosil code 229. When you will be replacing it, make sure you properly seal it back because two screws are fixed into the steel frame of the kill. Again, you see cut 291. On the kill hat, there are two points to check. First is that the hydraulic axe is properly secured with washers and screws from both sides and that the safety nut of the hydraulic piston is perfectly tight. More kill hydraulic tips and troubleshooting instructions I will address in a separated topic. Steering system is another crucial component of every sailing boat and luckily First 27 is having it very straightforward and easily accessible. First check the both of the hinges are completely tight and sealed. This is easiest done by checking the screws on the inside, which is easily accessible through the stern locker. Because the hinge is almost on the waterline, you need to reseal it completely. Again, use CCAT 291. Double check split pins of the rudder axis, which should be folded back properly. This one is definitely not. Next point of the rudder system are the rubber connectors. Because they don't flex much, they will last for at least 5 seasons or more, but still check them so they don't show any wear and tear, and replace them if needed. To replace them, you will need to open the screw on the other side of the rudder blade and properly reseal them back. You will again need to use Sika 291. The piece which you're looking for is universal power joint from Nautix, commonly used on the surfboards. Check the connection between the rudder's crossbar and the carbon tiller. The screw connecting them should not have any play and should be secured with a ring on the bottom of the screw. Beside annoying free move of the rudder system, which will for that reason become less precise, this will also very soon damage the carbon tube as well as the aluminum tiller crossbar. On older boats, check for the cracks on the inside of the rudder blade. They could happen in some cases. New boats are having a carbon reinforcements in this area and this is also a highly recommended upgrade for the older boats. Reinforcement will mostly solve the problem of the older rudder blades which are already showing some cracks. 
With the time, it could happen that the color carbon tiller will become a bit lower and in extreme position start to touch the cockpit floor. In this case, first check that the four screws connecting the tiller and the tiller X are completely firm and tight. If the connection of the tiller and the tiller X is fine, then you can solve the problem by adding millimeter or two spacer between the hull and the holder of the X. Be careful you reseal the screws properly if you'll do it because they are very close to the waterline. Third universal power connector, which is the same as on the rudder crossbar, is connecting the tiller extension. This one will need the replacement much sooner, I would say at least every two or three seasons. First 27 yearly maintenance of the mast is rather simple, but still let's check the key points. Mast top is exposed to quite heavy vibrations, especially in strong width, so it's worth checking that the screws on the top are all tight. Don't forget on the index base. Top of the groove should be locked with the 4 cm tube glued into the groove. It's preventing that you cannot lift the mainsail higher than designed so that the V-shard, which is on the mainsail halyard, cannot damage the head. That's not the case on this particular boat where the V-shard already damaged the head. Check the Dyneema lashing for both Janaker timbles. You are looking for the degraded Dyneema and you want to make sure that the timbre cannot fall out from the lashing. This one will need to be replaced very soon before stepping of the mast because some significant wear and tear can be found. If you'll be redoing the lashing, you need about one meter of one and a half millimeter Dyneema rope, so-called baby Dyneema. Make sure that you make lashing as close and as tight as possible, so just before the timbre is touching the attachment point. Shroud attachment point should be of course very tight, but you still should be able to rotate it so you can easily attach the shroud. And this is normal. You will notice if the screw will get loose because the sealant on the top will break. On the bottom of the mast check the mast foot. As you can see here this mast after two seasons in very salty Adriatic Sea is not showing any signs of corrosion yet. But I still suggest you that you open the mast foot by removing the self-tapping screws, there are three of them, and taking the mast foot off. Wash it with fresh water and check if it's corroded. If your mast foot is showing some first signs of corrosion, you can still use it for a season, but apply some Duralac before installing it back on the mast. If your mast foot is heavily corroded, you will need to replace it because the corrosion can also damage the carbon tube. Check the electric installation connectors as well. They should not be damaged and definitely don't forget on the contact spray after you will step the mast and lead the cable into the cabin. After rigging of the mast, securing all of the pins and attaching the uh, shrouds, make sure they are all protected with the electric tape. There is one simple trick how you can sh make sure that the tape will last for the whole season. When you're during the last round, don't tear the tape apart but cut it with a knife. That's how you'll not overstretch the tape and it will not peel off on the sun. Carefully check the shrouds. What you're looking for is permanent bend, damage or deformation of the wire. Take special care on the end of the wires where they are pressed into the terminals. That's usually the first place where the damage happens. It's extremely important to lubricate the threads of the turnbuckles on both ends. Only lubricated threads will enable you to reach the tension which is required for the sailing with first 27 in strong winds. At the end of the boom, the triple rock of the mainsail sheet is fixed on the rope attachment point. Check that the rope is not damaged or worn out. You really don't want to lose the mainsail in strong winds where this will usually break. If you need to replace it, you need the Nima core rope with as strong as possible cover. It shouldn't be more than six millimeter wide. On the other side of the boom, on the gooseneck, check that the gooseneck X is still secured with the screws on both sides. There are three checkpoints in connection to the bowsprit. First one is the lashing of the tack line. Check that it's not stretched too much. What you're looking for is if the timbre could escape from the, from the lashing. 
and that it's not worn out. This one seems pretty fine. If you need to replace it, you need one and a half millimeter Dyneema rope and make sure you make lashing long enough. The thimble should come over the edge of the bowsprit cap. What's missing on the particular bowsprit is the o-ring just behind the bowsprit cap. It's increasing the ceiling of the bowsprit when you're sailing upwind and the bowsprit is retracted, as well as make retracting much smoother. In case you have problems with water coming into the fr front cabin around the bowsprit, check the neoprene manchette in the anchor locker. If it's damaged, like this one on the picture, or if it's not tight around the bowsprit anymore, this one is still perfectly fine on, in this respect, you will need to replace the manchette. New and properly installed neoprene manchette should wipe the bowsprit tube and there could be maximum few drops of the water coming in through, into the front cabin. Little tip on how to properly lead the tack line. Go inside the pulpit and directly on the timber. Thank you for your attention and I hope this video was practical and informative. As already said, I have a lot to hear back from you. You can always reach me on the email on the bottom of the screen. Below the video, you will find the link on the new Beneteau First forum. You are welcome to share your ideas and experience about the maintenance of the First 27. We stay in touch and fair winds until my next post on the knowledge base.